Okay, welcome back everyone. The Cube's live coverage here in Boston, Massachusetts for AWS Reinforced 22. Big show for around security. Amazon reInvents coming up. That's the big event of all time for AWS. ReMars was another one. Reinforced the re-shows they call them. The Cube's got you covered. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube with Dave Vellante, who's in an analyst session right now. He'll be back shortly. Got two great guests from an amazing company, Hacker One. Been on the Cube, Cube many times. Cube Alliance, Martin Mikos, of course, a big time Cube Alliance. Got two great guests: Sean Ryan, Senior Principal Product Marketing Manager, Will Capcio, Senior Sales Engineer. Gents, welcome to the Cube. Thanks Thank for you. having us, John. So we, Martin's been on many times. He's such a character, yeah. but he's <laughs> such a legend. Yeah. Your company has had great traction, great community. Um, just this phenomenal uh, example of community meets technology uh, and problem problem. Yeah. Like he's been part of that organization. Here at Reinforce, they're just kind of getting wind of it now, right? You're hearing open, teamwork, breaking down the silos. A big theme is this whole idea of open community, but yet be hardcore with the security. It's been a big part of the Reinforce. What do you guys think of the show so far? Loving it. Um, partly too, we're both local here in the Boston area, <laughs> so the commute was pretty nice. <laughs> and the heat wave broke the other day, so that's wonderful. But um, yeah, great show. It's good to be back in person doing this kind of stuff. And um, just, it's really lively. You get a lot of good energy. We've had a bunch of people stopping by trying to learn what we're all about. And so it's really fun. Great show so far. And, and you guys have a great company. Take a minute to explain for the folks who don't, may not know HackerOne. Tell them what you guys do real quick in one minute. Okay, the quick elevator pitch. <laughs> um, so really we're, we're making the internet safer using a community of ethical hackers and so our platform enables that so we can skill match the best talent that's out there around the world to help find all the vulnerabilities that your company needs to discover so you can plug those holes and keep yourself safe. So in an era of a talent gap, Will, you know the technology's out there, but Absolutely. sometimes the skills are not there so you guys can fill the void. Kind of a crowdsourced vibe, right? Yeah, exactly. If, you, if you're trying to build a security program, um, and apply defense in depth. We offer a terrific way to engage additional security talent, uh, either because you can't hire enough or yeah. your team is uh, simply overloaded, too much to do, yeah. so. And hackers like to be a little bit, uh, white hack hat hackers, like to be independent, <laughs> might yeah. want some flexibility in their schedule, live Absolutely. around the world. Yes, no question. Virtual we have hackers first. that do it full time, that do it part time, and everything in between. Well, you guys are in the middle here with some real products, so talk about what's going on here. How vulnerable are the surface areas and organizations that you're seeing? Yeah, um, probably more so than you would think. So uh, we ran a survey earlier this year, 800 security and IT professionals across North America and Europe. And uh, one of the findings from that survey was that nearly a third, actually over a third, 37% of the attack surface is not secured. Some of it's not even known. They don't know what they don't know. <laughs> they just have this, this entire area. And you can imagine, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, you know, real legitimate reasons yeah. that this happens. One of those really being that we don't know what we don't know. We haven't scanned our yeah, attack and surface. And also, it's about a decade of no perimeter anymore. Yes. Welcome to the cloud. For sure, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And people are moving quick, right? You know, the cloud, perfect example. Cloud people are building new applications on top of these, new underlying configurations happening on a constant basis acquisitions, you know, it's just a fast moving thing. Nobody can keep track of it. There's a lot of different <laughs> skill sets you need, you know, and yeah, skill shortage out there too. And what's about. the attacker solution you guys have? You guys have this HackerOne attack resistance component. What's that about? That's right, so that is to solve what we call the attack resistance gap. So that's area, that area that's not protected, hasn't been secured. Um, on top of just not knowing what those assets are or how vulnerable they are. The other thing that happens is people are sort of doing status quo testing or they're not able to keep up with effective testing. So scanners are great. They, they can catch common vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. but they're not going to catch those really hard to find vulnerabilities. The thing that the really sophisticated attackers are going to go after. Yeah. Yeah. So we use a, a, this large community that we have of ethical hackers around the world to be able to skill match them and get them doing bug bounties, doing pen tests, really bulletproofing the organization and helping them risk rank what they find, yep. triage these, do the retesting, you know, get it get it very secure. So that's there's, 
how we how we do it on a high level. Like, well, you might have a yeah. I mean, there's a tremendous yeah. amount of automation out there, right? But you can't quite, at least not yet, replace critical thinking yeah. from smart security minds. So, uh, HackerOne has a number of solutions where we can apply those minds in different ways at different parts of the software lifecycle, um, at different cadences to fit our customers' needs, to fit their security needs, and make sure that there's more complete human coverage throughout their software lifecycle and, and, and not just automation. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Will and Sean, because you think about it, open source is like not only grown significantly, it's like, it's, it is the software industry. If you believe that, which I do, open source is there. It's all software free. The integration is creating a DevOps movement that's going the whole nother level. So devs are doing great. They're pumping out code. In fact, I heard a quote here on theCUBE earlier this morning from the CTO of Sequence Security that said, shift left, shield right. So shifting left is build your security into the code, but still you got to have a shield. You guys have this shielding capability with your attack module management service. So you can, now you got the devs thinking, I got to better get security native. So, but they're pumping out so much code. Yep. There's more use cases, so there's going to be mm -hmm. code reviews needed for stuff that the C said, what is this? We got a code review, new stuff, a developer created something. Yes. I mean, that's what happens. Oh, that's what's going on everywhere, right? Exactly. Uh, we, we often hear that for every 100 developers, you got one security professional. <laughs> you know, talk about skill shortage, that, that's just not sustainable. <laughs> How are you going to keep up with that? <laughs> so, <laughs> Your phone is ringing off the hook, there's no phones anymore, but like, <laughs> technically. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah, you need, you need to go external, find some experts who can help you figure that out and, and keep up with that cadence, you know, it keeps going so and going. Hacker One, I, I love the ethical thing, I'm, you know I'm a big fan, yeah. everyone who watches theCUBE knows I'm a big fan of Martin and your company, but it's not just bug bounties that you do. That's just people right. think of. They see that right. in the news. Oh, I made a million dollars from saving Microsoft Teams from being exploited or something like that, or weird things, uh, big, big, big numbers. But you do more than that. There's code reviews, there's assessments, like a variety of different things, yes. right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, I'll let, What's uh, the, what are the uh, hottest areas? Yeah, I'm yeah a, I mean, that's I'm exactly why that we one. coined the term attack resistance management, really, is to help describe all those areas that we cover. So you're right, Bug Bounty is our flagship product. It's what we're best known for and it's a terrific solution, but on top of that, we're able to layer things like vulnerability disclosure, right. pen testing, and code review. Pen test is actually really, um, really important. Attack surface management, you know, a, a whole suite of complementary offerings to help you engage these hackers in new and interesting ways. Yeah. The bug body is very popular because it's, it's fun. Yeah. Right, yes. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's if you to work on some, it's fun for the hackers, but the white hat hackers, but the companies, they can see, where's my bugs, it's a fear. Yep. Fear of missing out and the fear of getting screwed over. That's yeah. the biggest driver, <laughs> yes, right? Definitely. You know? And and we now uh, we have a product called Assets. So this is attack surface management. Yeah. And what we're able to do with that is bring that in, leverage the ethical hackers to risk rank. What what's your assets out there? How vulnerable are these? What's critical? Feed that in, and then you know as Will was saying, we've got all kinds of different testing options. Sometimes right. bug bounty continuous that works. Sometimes you want oh, pen yeah. test. You know you want it bound. Well, the thing about the thing about the asset. pen test. Well, the soccer report. Amazon's got soccer reports, but yeah. pen test is a moving train. Yeah. Because if you're pushing new code, you've got to pen test it all the time. It's not a one and done. Exactly. You've got to keep it running. Yep. It's yeah, you, one and run, right? You can't do the old school penetration test once a year, big monolithic thing, you know, yeah. this is just a check the box for compliance. It's like, no, you need to be focusing this on the assets that you're releasing, which are constantly changing, yeah. and do ongoing smaller cadences of, of I had a, I had someone at a conference, uh, had a few cocktails in them, confess to me that they, they forged a pen test report. Oh man. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because it's like, oh, it was three months ago. Oh, don't worry yeah. about it. Like, <laughs> but a lot can happen in three months. No, this yeah. is reality. They're like, oh, yeah. I can't turn it around fast enough. They had an AppSec review yeah. and, and in their company. Mm -hmm. and, and that's I it. I mean, I'm not saying everyone's doing bad behavior, but like, people can look the other way. That creates more vulnerabilities. It can happen. And, and even just that time space. Let's say you're only doing a pen test once a year, or once every two years. That's a long time. It's yeah. a lot of dwell time. You can have an attacker inside 
It's mulling around your network. All right, so we, so we get a big service here. Let's go on AWS, we're here at Reinforce. The trend, you see Amazon getting close with, closer to the ecosystem, a lot more integration. How are you guys taking HackerOne's attack surface area product, management software, closer to Amazon? What's going on involved? Because at the end of the day, they're enabling a lot of value and their partners are growing and becoming platforms within them themselves. What is the connection with Amazon, keeping those apps running? How do you guys do that? Yeah. So we've got a specific assessment type for AWS. So on the one hand, we're, we're bringing in the right group of ethical ha hackers who are AWS certified. They have the right skill set, we're matching them. We've got the right assessment type for them to be able to track against and find the right vulnerabilities, report on those. So this is our, our pen test offering geared particularly towards the AWS platform. And then we also have a, a um, AWS Security Hub integration. Mm -hmm. So if customers are using the AWS Security Hub, we can plug into that, feed that information, and that gets more to it, the defense in depth for, for your AWS And you platform. guys verify all the, all the ethical hackers, everything's verified? Oh yes, absolutely. Yep. So they're added. verified for their pen testing experience and skills, um, and of course their AWS skills in particular. Uh, and their work experience, uh, making sure that it's long enough, that it's good, background check, the, the whole nine, so absolutely. How far has Amazon come from your perspective over the past few years with the security partnerships? Um, I mean, the services have grown every year. Yeah. I mean, every Amazon reInvent, thousands of new announcements, new services. I mean, if they yeah. update the DNS server, it's a new thing, right? So like, everything's happening. Yeah. What's different now? It's great to see, I mean, I, I, you look around at how many different types of security solutions there are here, how many different types of partners, and, and it just shows you that defense in depth, again, is a really critical thing. Been a wonderful partner for us. I mean, they're, they're a big fan of us. They, they tell us that all the time. Because um, yeah, their customers use you. Because their customers do, <laughs> <too>, right? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But um, no, it, it's, it's been great. So we're looking at, at, we've got some things on the roadmap, some continued integrations yeah. that we look forward to doing with, with AWS. But um, you know, again, it's, it's a great, powerful platform. It gives customers a lot of freedom. But with that freedom comes the responsibility yeah. that's needed to actually Well, what's your us. take? We hear uh, hybrid security keys, management systems announced today, encrypt everything, don't have over-permissive environments. Obviously they're, they're not, they're talking about more platform and, and type yeah, stuff. Absolutely, I, I, my take would be I think our own partnership with the AWS security team is great evidence that they're thinking about the right things. Uh, we worked with, in conjunction with them to develop our pen test methodology. So that combined proprietary HackerOne platform data and findings across all of our customers uh, that are commonly, common issues found in AWS environments uh, with their own knowledge and their own experiences from the AWS security team directly. So it's yeah. a pretty powerful checklist that we're able to run through on some of these customers and make sure that all of the most common misconfigurations and such are, are uh, covered. Yeah, they're highly motivated to do that because they get blamed for the S3 buckets being kept open. It's not even their fault. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, of course not. You know, we, <laughs> we got hacked, who were on Amazon? Oh, yeah. Amazon's terrible. <laughs> well, most of the, like, like. Yeah, you know, one of the things <laughs> we like to talk about is the fact that you know, cloud is really about automation, right? Yeah. Yep but you can't automate that human ingenuity. The, yeah, the, so the skills that come with an actual human who has the experience and the know-how to there's fix a, these and the, There's a lot going on in Amazon. It's always been kind of like, uh, it was just described earlier in a cube, an erector set. Not Lego blocks yet, but still kind of, you still got to build it. It's getting better in yeah. the Lego model, but there are challenges in protecting cloud, Will. I mean, this is a big part of protecting cl cloud platforms like AWS. What are some of those challenges? I think some of the challenges are the ephemeral nature of the cloud can really result in um, developers and you know, really business units across an organization spinning up assets that IT or security don't know about. Uh, and so that's where HackerOne, things like HackerOne assets and those attack surface management style uh, solutions come into play, trying to identify those assets proactively uh, and make sure that they're receiving some sort of uh, uh, attention from the security team, whether it's automated or manual or ideally both. You guys got a good solution. So about the partnership, we've got one minute left. Mm. Talk about your partnership with AWS. You guys are certified in their security group with their team in Marketplace, yes. right? Talk yes. about some of the things. Yeah, we've been in Marketplace over a year. We've um, had that the specific solution that I mentioned, the app pen test for AWS in place and integrated with, with Security Hub for some time now. 
Um, there's, there's some other stats that we could probably share around uh, the ethical hackers that we have working on that. We have a number of certified AWS hackers who, um, again, they have the right skill set for AWS. And they've been a great partner, and we, we are very focused on continuing to work with them and, and build out some new yeah. offerings going forward. Well, you guys have done a great job. Will, tell your team congratulations on the tech side, on the product side. Very strong community. Um, you guys had a lot of success. Congratulations, and thanks for sharing on the Cube. Appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for having us, John. All right. Thank you for We're here time. at Reinforce, where all the access have It's open, it's team-oriented, got cloud scale, data, encryption on everything. Big news coming out of Reinforce, which theCUBE's got it covered here. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break. <laughs>